Mm -hmm. Welcome back. It is the Friday Flex edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time for us to look at the front pages of some national dailies. What are on them this morning of the press and Chief Judah Johnson, Chief Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism, is joining us from Lagos State this morning. Chief Judah Johnson, <laughs> good morning to you. Well, in this season, everybody is a chief. I just made it to you. Or just like uh, because of Ilda, everybody be became a chef in Nigeria in order to bring the work record. So let me accept the the the, the chief Tansi title. Please do it. Of the season. You <laughs> deserve it. Season. You actually deserve <laughs> it, so good morning. You actually deserve good it. Yeah, good morning to our viewers <laughs> all over the world. It's a pleasure to have them on this Friday. We see uh, after the salad break, so we say back at the salad to them. Oh, well, yes, work has begun. Let's look at uh, the front pages of, the, of some national dailies this morning. I will begin with the Guardian newspaper. Uh, it begins with towards first 100 days. In 30 days of honeymoon, Tinubu's sweeping reforms leave Nigerians poorer, agitated. It's a big story. Uh, by the garden there. You have to go to page pages four and five to get details of this big story. But they have some high points of the first 30 days on the front page. And, and, and I should take that. So they begin with the fuel subsidy removal, FX Naira floating, handling of the National Assembly's leadership matter, appointments of service chiefs, and Mirfele's arrest. Proposed VAT on diesel, 1,000 Naira charges on vehicle ownership, EFCC bus removal, new tariffs on electricity, student loan scheme. Though there's an update on the electricity tariff thing, but there you have it. And then they ask the big question in bold capital letters, but where are the palliatives? Where are the palliatives? But where are the palliatives? And a very, very huge question mark there. All right, so moving on, you have Catholic bishops kick, reject bill for council on Christian education. Page three is where details of that can be found. Abuja residents lament growing rate of al -Majiri. Page 9 is where they have their metro page, uh, where the details of this can be found. Abuja residents lament growing rate of al -Majiri. So you have pictures of indigent kids there, the al of Abuja. I evoked a Milekon spirit to win despite cashless policy, says Tinubu. Details of that is on page 6. Environmentalists decry... Fresh oil spillage in rivers. You have that on page 22. And Obi tackles Tinubu over long convoy, asks him to lead by example. Details of that is on page 7. So there you have it. Oh no. Right on top of the masthead, you have soft drinks, chewing gums, toothpaste, pose cancer risks. And that's according to WHO. It's a warning from WHO that soft drinks, chewing gums, toothpaste pose cancer risks. And then you have beside it there, issued names hit 101 million. And that's 56.7% uh, allocated to mills from that 101 million as written here in front of the Guardian newspaper. 56.7% has been allocated to mails. That out of the 101 million names issued, 56.7% of them are men. All right, so we'll move forward to the Nation newspaper. And it leads with, Tinubu to governors, be ready. Let's fix economy together. The writer there, Shatima Akwabio Abbas, 
governor celebrate Eid with president in Lagos. So President Tinubu came home for the Eid celebration. Okay, so above the masthead, you have the luge of visitors forced Buhari to leave Daura, says Aid. Details of that is on page 5. Eid ground clash, Adelike's account illogical. So the senator and the governor are disagreeing on what actually transpired at the Eid ground on Saturday. Bloomberg rates Aliko Dangote Africa's richest. And page 5 is where you find details of that. An 11 die as truck rams into bus on Benin Lagos Road. On page 6 is where you have details of that very unfortunate incident that happened on the Benin Lagos Road. And right down here you have Ipman cautions against hike in petrol price. NBF awaits family's burial plan for 1984 Olympian boxer Okorodudu. Okay, so we'll move from the nation newspaper to Business Day. And Business Day is leading with baby making racket exploits Nigerian women. It's their big story. Baby making racket exploits Nigerian women. And above the master, you have Tinubu's next big move is fighting crude theft. And that's according to the Bank of America. His next move is fighting crude theft. The rider to that. Naira fair value seen at 680 Naira to the dollar. Okay, so we move from business day to nature news. And Nature News is leading with, Emir of Kana urges citizens to stop dumping refuse, keep drainages clear. Page 3 is where you have details of that. NEPC empowers Imokoko farmers with seedlings to boost agricultural products. Exports, I beg your pardon. The Bonnie government declares July 1st as Sanitation Day and implements movement ban. Page 5 is where that can be found. Casino State Governor emphasizes agriculture as key to economic revival. 4.3 million Nigerians in Borno Adamawa Yobi of severe hunger. And that's according to UN, 4.3 million Nigerians in Borno, Adama, Wayobi uh, are in severe hunger. Well, that's the much I'll be taking from the Nature News. So it's time for my analyst to join me. Chief Jida Johnson, let's begin to talk, yeah, yeah let's analyze these headlines this morning. I think we should begin with that that's on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. In 30 days of honeymoon, Tinubu sweeping reforms leave Nigerians poorer agitated. And of course, I read out the high points that um, the Guardian placed here on their front page of the first 30 days. Let's have your take on this. Uh, well, then. Um is a mixed bag of feelings, mixed bag of feelings in the sense that um, there are positives from the actions of the president um, in terms of putting in place structure that can build upon concerning growing the economy or reviving the, the economy and saving Nigeria from collapse. And at the same time, there are negatives in terms of the immediate impact it has on every Nigerian except the political class, on every Nigerian. Um, the removal of the oil subsidy, which led to the hike in the price of PMS, has left a deep hole in the pocket of every Nigerian. I have never seen anyone that has not complained. It has also affected them. Um, 
a lot of small and medium enterprises yes. that use fuel to run their business. Uh, uh, there's no doubt that if the 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 VAT is also added to that of diesel, is also going to affect some major SMEs and some major businesses. And if care is not taken, we'll lose about 25 to 50 percent of some of our small and medium scale enterprise because the, 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 there's no way they could they could cover the the the, 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 the money they are costs. making to cover for their running cost. Mm -hmm. The bulk of what everybody is earning now is going on on, on running cost. Is is for you to survive. So if government on its own is complaining that it lacks funds, it does not have the required resources and then his taxes is imposing and levies on the citizen left, right, and center. Then what happens to the citizen? We, where do they get their own money from when, when? One, the, 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 the salaries of um, the civil servant who constitute less than 7% of the entire working force in Nigeria, whether state, local government, or federal, have not been increased. And then you also consider that um, there are no palliatives because the key rider to Guardian, Guardian's um, story is that we are the palliatives. There are no palliatives to cushion the effect of this economic, economic and don't forget that we are coming from the last administration with double digit, with double digit, um, double digit inflation mm. and at the same time from the cashless policy which has actually made a lot of Nigeria to be cashless in the sense that we were using money to buy money at that particular point in time for you to, you know, how much amount of money Nigeria were using to, to, to buy in order for them to survive. So, invariably, there must be, as far as um, some of these policies were concerned, the argument of some of us is very simple. And the president should have put in his economic team in place and there should have been a deliberation to look at the, the pros and the cons the, the direct implication and the future implication of all of this of all of this um, policy statement that is making through his speeches and his declaration without having a clear understanding of the sorry state of the economy, the dark street in which a lot of Nigerians have found themselves and what are the state She didn't just say something in the election us to sacrifice to sacrifice to sacrifice and we hope that there will be leadership by example those that are asking us to sacrifice they themselves will also sacrifice themselves mm -hmm. either by cutting the cost of governance and showing example to nigerians that okay well it's no longer business as you are if we are asking you to sacrifice we also will make sacrifices on our own part however if you look at the convoy of the president like some have pointed out and some have tried to explain and justify and then and look at the convoy of the senate president which i saw the first day was leaving um uh, the, the the his office in in abuja and then you go and look at the convoys of the governor and the convoys of the speaker then you understand that well are we really ready to have the needed are we, are, we, are we really ready to take the needed steps in order to renew the hope of Nigerians in government? Because a lot of Nigerians have lost complete hope in government. A lot of Nigerians have lost com complete hope in our leaders because we believe that well, they are not working in our own interest. They are just working in their own in their own self interest. So, if you look at floating of forex um, without having an without having your your monetary team. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. with, you see, your monetary team, what we have is is, 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 a, is an acting capacity, central bank governor, and the rest of it. So some, some of these policies are important. They are, they, are, they are necessary. However, it's about the timing, it's about the implementation, and it's about the president being in a hurry to address all situations. Sometimes, um, slow and steady win the race. It's not how quick you start your journey that determines how it ends well. So my, my counsel and my advice is very simple. Let us have a thorough overview with the economic team, not a narrow, not a narrow, you know, sometimes they were saying that the presidential advisory committee, and I said that does not exist in the constitution. What exists in the constitution is the Federal Executive Council. 
is the national economic council any other any other thing outside of that is illegal and we should point it out from the from the onset it's important Indeed, we should point out it, any form of <clears throat> illegality from the onset otherwise it becomes yeah, a norm. From the onset because, because what we did what they what a the lot of people did with worries to patronize him and not to bring him to check and to that patronism he took a lot of wrong steps thinking that it was working in the right direction and after eight years we start gnashing our feet, blaming ourselves. How did we get ourselves here? The, the most important thing I, is I think Nigerians cried out a lot, you know, during that mm -hmm. administration. Uh, but the question is, did he listen? Did he give a damn about what Nigerians were uh, crying about? Anyway, well, yeah. and then there was something you talked about, you know, the um, convoys of these political officers. Um, Nigerian politicians are known to be very extravagant. Um, some of them may even be able to afford these on their own without being in office right now. But I guess for me, the issue with what they were displaying, all those, the, the, the entourage, the long you know, line of vehicles that follows them around this time, they should consider, they should be sensitive to the psyche of Nigerians. At this point in time, the Nigerians are going through this very trying period. They should not be seen to be um, disconnected from the realities on ground. You understand? And so to that effect, they should be very mindful of what they display. They should be very mindful of their extravagance, even if they could have been able to afford it without um, taxpayers' money. Right? Well, well um, for the optics, like you said, for the optics, they need to do some studying thing. And for 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 the people they also need to take some actions that will not make nigerians to be like the guardian put it succinctly yeah. a lot of nigerians are agreed yes a lot of nigerians are poorer look I, for example i have become poorer that's the reality there's no need for anybody to play around the bush because um the amount of money i've spent on buying for commuting from home to office as 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 quadruple mm -hmm. so where is it going to come from i have a budget i, I don't have access to getting loans like federal government or state government to fund to fund to fund my lifestyle and i hope this administration will stop that in, in getting loan to fund the lifestyle of public office holders mm -hmm. and they're using loan to justify that we are building infrastructure and then we don't even know the value from the loans we have collected and the deliverables attached to those ones. So it is it is very, very important. A lot of Nigerians are happy. So all you just need to do is just to sit down in twos and trees, discuss with your friend. What do people discuss among themselves in the last one month with respect to the policies of the government? Their enthusiasm on one hand, but there is a, there is a lot of pain. A lot of pain. Yeah, so, so, so let, the question, yeah, the question, the big question is where are the palliatives? Okay, so let's move on from that very um, headline to the one right on top of it. Soft drinks, chewing gums, toothpaste pose cancer risks. WHO is warning. Now, when you see this I kind agree. of warning, you wonder, even toothpaste, haba. <laughs> uh, well, we should go back. We should go back to nature, and thank God we have stories in nature. Mm. We should go back to nature and use them. Um, chewing stick. And use chewing stick, and use chewing stick, which the WHO and the big pharmaceutical company condemned. And then, um, well, in reality, if you have suffered toothache and you have applied the one for us in the southwest, you have used Paco Jebu, Onriata, and the rest of it. Then I can assure you that you know that works magic in, in preventing your, your your tooth from decaying. So it, it's important they pointed it out that all of these things have its own implication on the gum, hmm. the toothpaste, the chloride, the way we the way we apply the chloride. Now if they are saying it was generic, I hope that they provided um, clarity on this particular matter, identifying which particular product hmm. or which particular component of this of these things we are talking about, which particular component, if you see these elements in all in chewing gum, in, in toothpaste and the rest of it, once you check, you see the ingredients, please avoid it. I hope they provide those clarification. Yeah, because I hope it they is, do too. It is, 
it, it, it is important to guide the people in order for them not to come up with this sweeping generalization and then it in effect affects the market of some of these products that are still useful and still useful and then good for human consumption so it's important that is done otherwise everybody will just go with it WHO have said that uh, so so and so we need to cancel the statute stop using toothpaste whereas there are some that are very 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 good so yeah. I hope there's clarity. Yeah, I hope they provide that clarity. Well, The Guardian this morning is loaded with so many headlines that are worthy of talking, uh, are being talked about. Catholic bishops kick, reject bill for council on Christian education. Well, um, as far as I'm concerned, there's no need for that. Nigeria is a secular state. There's no state religion. It's just that a lot of, we are, we are, we are, we are a country of contradictions and a lot of religious contraption. A situation whereby you have a secular state and then you have the state sponsoring two relig to religion only for pilgrimage. That's the, those that go to Hajj in Mecca and those that are going to Jerusalem. I don't know when they will start sponsoring people going to the different, different mountains in Nigeria and the different Question has a reason. Question has a reason why government is even doing that. Why is government sponsoring people for pilgrimage? That, that's what we are saying. It's one of the things that you should... Religion is a personal decision. It's your personal lifestyle. It's your personal decision with your God. Still shouldn't be sponsoring you in fulfilling whatever requirements of your religion. That's why I've said that. I, I, I hope um, they should understand that you don't only have two religions in Nigeria. There are multiple religions. And Nigeria is a secular state, so there's no state religion. So there's no basis for somebody to sit down to educate people on what and what should be the practice of a particular faith. The adherents of that faith know how to practice it. They know how to regulate it. You recall what happened, uh, I think earlier this week or last week, where somebody was told to death in Shokoto as a result of being hacked of committing blasphemy. And at the end of the day, some of the things we had is that, okay, there was doctrinal differences. Doctrinal differences. So when you look at the issue of religion, how are you going to... The, 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 the doctrine of the of, of Pentecostal is different from that of Catholic. That of Catholic is different from Anglican. That of Anglican is different from Methodist. That of Methodist, that's why you have denominations. So there are there are variants in the various denominations. So how are you going to harmonize it with one body regulating that in Nigeria? I'm sure somebody just wants to create an empire for himself, create an empire for himself and look for opportunity to siphon public funds because they will create an agency, they will put money there, they will employ, they will appoint director general and then public funds will be devoted there and you have created an empire for some people to start making money at the PS of every other Nigerian. So, they are not interested in regulating anything. And as far as the Christian faith is concerned, there's no regulation. The regulation is by the Holy Spirit, and your religion is your personal devotion to God. It's, it's personal. Everybody has an encounter with God when it comes to that. So nobody can regulate that. Nobody can determine that. So I just think that it's a waste of time. It's a waste of public resource. And somebody sitting somewhere was just trying to be funny. And uh, I think that that's also... Um, in response to there's a council, there's an Islamic council on education. Um, and so I think that that was done okay because there's an there's a national council on Islamic education. We must also do something in, in, in respect to that. But Paul said, those that compare themselves to other people, Paul said they are fools. That's even you, you are not meant to compare your lifestyle, your experience to other people's experiences. Everybody has his own race to run. So basically, Religion is a personal decision. State has no business. And I'm, I have said it. If this matter is taken to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will nullify whatever outcome you have concern in this because... Yeah, Nigeria because why set up a council? There is a Christian Association of Nigeria anyway, so one would have thought that um, any other thing, anything that has to do with the faith collectively, they would go through can. The world, you know, I've told you that people are looking for ways to create an empire and have access to public funds. There will be a DG. There will be council members who will be entitled to some allowances. They will have official car. Whether they are uncovered, it will just be 10. So when you see all of these things, where multiplicity of agencies are being created, it's not about the contribution. It's about creating 
mini empire. It's about creating estates for people through which they can make money out of the nation. That's just that's just that's just it. I usually use this classic Michael Jackson song. All I want to see, they don't really care about us. They don't, they don't do they really care, do they really care about us when you impose too much tax burden on the people. It has a ripple effect. It deepens it it, it deepens the hole in their pocket. Mm. It 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 reduces their standard of living. It makes the cost of living to be high. So all of this put together tells you about the thinking and the mentality of those that are in public office. As far as they are concerned, I have said it. All those that are taking decisions for us, when was the last time they used their own hard earned money to buy fuel? Mm. Uh, let's, let's, when was the last time they used their hard earned money? Apart from the Senate president has been in government since 1999. The president has been in government since 1999, directly or indirectly. The, the secretary to the federal government, who is the NG room, um, George Akume has been in government since 1990. Has never left government for one day. So for quarter of century, and the majority of them, with this, except this year, that we have a rate, the high turnover in the, in the National Assembly um, because of the tsunami that happened with the election. Usually, majority of the members in the House of Assembly in the in the in this in the in the in the have been there for twenty. Since 1999. So the Speaker of Lagos State House of Assembly has been there since 2003. So we've been funding their lifestyle. They are far away from reality. Yeah. When did they enter public buses? When did, they, when did they live in houses that have no light? When do they have to think about whether there's light or no light? Because they have to power the generator. If you don't power the generator, somebody will receive query both at home and then in the office. That the house of the Speaker, the house of the this and this house of this public official does not have all of this. So they are far away from reality. And I recommend in 2013, I recommended for my all of my students to read the book My Vision by Al Maktoum. By Al Maktoum, the ruler of Dubai, where he spoke about a lot of things, where he does not use convoy, where he does not use any security to move to move around because the people knew that they are working in their own interest. That's what he said. I'm trying to paraphrase what he said. You know, that the people knew yeah, what are you saying? The people, the people knew that they are working in their own interest. So why does he need? Why does he need? Why does he need to Security. use all the convoys? And like we said when we opened, um, during campaign they moved within the midst of the people. Yeah. But after campaign, then secure. We did not kill them when they were campaigning to secure power from us. Mm. Now after they have gotten power from us, that's when we want to kill them. Mm. That's when the security shields them from the people they actually promised to serve. Exactly. And it's the vestiges of or is the vestiges of military military administration. That's sick mentality. There is the need for those that we have elected into public office to make the people to feel what it is for them to serve them. You see, because there's this sick mentality. You see security aids shielding them. You know, it was the mentality that was brought from military administration and it is still being perpetuated in our democratic society. It doesn't just make any sense. How would you have a democratic elected president and then you are carrying big guns? When we see the president of America, we don't see guns. When we see the prime minister of Great Britain, we don't see guns. Well, a Nigerian was just jogging. She was just jogging on her own one morning. We all saw it trended in, in Amsterdam. And the prime minister, and the prime minister of 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 Holland was walking to his office and then the lady was doing selfie with, with the prime minister. That is my prime minister. Mm -hmm. That's the level with which you must build democracy. That's the signal you send that you're actually working in the in, in the interest of the people. You are not sending a signal that you have become an emperor. What we have witnessed over the years in with our democracies that those who have elected have become emperor. So I've said that they shouldn't address them as his excellency, address them as his imperial majesty. Because they, 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 yeah, that's the way you should address them. Don't address them as His Excellency. No, 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 no. It's Imperial Majesty. We have replaced absolute monarchy with democratically elected imperialists. That's the reality. Except, except 
Ordinary local government chairman, you can't assess. Mm -hmm. The police will be pushing you back. Exactly. Ordinary gov governor elected by the people to serve the people, you can't assess. The, the security will push you back. The very security oppressive. Is the security is, yeah. it's, it's, it's very quite, oppressive it's quite leaders. Limited. Very self-serving. Very oppressive leaders. Politics in Nigeria is... Is the siege, is the siege mentality that is created. And those that create those siege mentality, they are getting vote for it. And they want to perpetuate those siege mentality. Now, there's a particular story. They said the president... Former president left Daura because he said he left Daura because of what? The number of visitors, the, the lineage of visitors that come to visit him. You know, there are no sick. Chief Jude Johnson. Well, after that eight years, he has come back to reality to see his people. And people are coming to see him. Now, he ran away from Daura to another place. God will help those that are there presently. <laughs> well, let's just touch on this issue on NIN. Uh, issued NIN's heat 101 million naira, uh, 101 million, and 56.7% uh, of that is allocated to, to the males. Are we seeing a situation where men are indeed more than women as against the well, popular know. narrative that men are scarce and that women are just all over the place looking for men? No, no, no well, um, if you check, if you check the, the the statistics of the vote registered voter to the registered voter, if you check the statistics of the registered voter and look at the the demography of it, and then if you also look at some basic statistics, you discover the last census we had men were more than female, and so it's it's not it's not surprising that you are seeing that 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 particular situation, and don't also forget that even the younger generation are not even interested in marrying. So basically, we are not we are not populating um, the society again. There's a particular story just um, related to this that a, a, um, it's, I can't recall the percentage, but it's a certain number of people that are 40 have never been married. I think about uh, in United States of America, that figure was provided. It's people that have been 40 years that have never been married. From across, across, across the gender. So it's, it's clear from this. But from what we have seen, that there are more men than than women. But women make society better. We need more. We need more women. All right. Uh, you are listening to Jide Johnson, chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, who's joined me on Off the Press to analyze some headlines on some of the national newspapers uh, we just had a glitch there i don't know if he's back judah johnson are you back okay so it's good to have yeah. you back chief judah johnson so exactly. before we had that glitch you were talking about how we need more women right and, and so let's move on with that and um connect it with the headline on business day which says baby making racket exploits nigerian women well, um, it's a global problem. It's a global problem in the sense that child trafficking and human trafficking and um, the, the, the human organ market, it's, 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 it's very, 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 very viable. And uh, we link this particular story to a particular guy that was arrested in Ukraine in the course of this week with an 11 month old baby than 11 month old baby hmm. uh, you see we've, over over the years we've seen so many stories relating to uh, this cash for play when it comes to human trafficking and then um i, I can recall a particular a particular story sometime where these persons will get a lot of young ladies impregnated and the babies will be taken away will be taken away from them and then this Babies are, are used for all. It's there is there's a lot of things that that um, it's just like the abortion market in in the United States of America and the fight over over abortion or non-abortion. But what do they use the fetus for and the rest of it? If you know, mm. if you know what really goes on in the in the pharmaceutical company, if you know what goes on in the in the health sector with human organ, we we had 
It may not even be you will recall that of our former Deputy Senate President serving a jail time in, in, in Great Britain today because of organ, organ harvesting and the rest of it. So, um, if there's no market for it, exactly. there, won't be, there won't be a demand. Where are the markets? And Where then, are the markets? When that of Ikurimadu broke out, I asked this question. It was just one of the doctors that raised that flag. How many have gone under the current? If it does not exist, what does not exist in a society? You won't see. When we talk about drugs too, when they say that, okay, oh, so, 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 and so, amount of drugs that have been seized and going to Dubai, going to this, and you know there is death penalty if you are caught in those places. The question I ask is that, why are they going to those places? If there is no market for it, then there won't be the, the need for them, some people to push. So there's a market, there's a global market for babies, for human organs. And just, it's not just, limited. Just this week, I saw a video, just this week, I saw a video on social media of a woman who was um, saying that she's repented now of her evil ways and uh, she's been dealing in sale of babies. And she said she sold over 30 babies and each child she sold for 500,000 naira. Over 30 babies that she sold. She sold three out of, no, she sold four out of her five babies, her own personal kids. She sold four of, out yeah, of them and then she sold is, about 30 there, children. There is, there is, for those that are Christian, they will know um, there is a God that those people that practice death worship is called Molech. So he's the one that consumed the blood of baby. And you have them across the length and breadth. There are some, some things that have been termed as conspiracy theories. But if you begin to dig deeper and then um, begin to dig deeper and the quest for power is, is not limited to Nigeria alone. So as far as I'm concerned, if you follow NAPTI and all these agencies on human trafficking and what have you, if you listen to what has been done, you will be, you'll be shocked that these horrible, horrendous things are happening. And then you begin to question, where are, where are the conscience? What has happened to the conscience of man? Why is man put so up to be like this to, 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 to be engaging? To be engaged? I think that government agencies need to see through more spotlight into this. And those that have been arrested should be prosecuted. Some of the challenges you have is in the prosecution. Of this, of these people, even when they are prosecuted, how quickly do you get judgment to dispense with that particular case? Because you don't make example, you don't make example of bad behavior. You continue to reinforce such behavior in the society. People are making money through these means, either through um, for spiritual purposes or for medical for medical purposes. You you recall that some of the things some people said is that they use the brain of aborted babies to do vaccines and the rest of it. Some have termed it to be conspiracy theories left, right, and center. But we may never know what is there. Yeah, well, this uh, the business day has made this their big story. And by the time you look at the details of this headline, you find that some of the people who buy children are women who are looking for male children. Isn't that very um, shocking? Well, I've told, look, I've told, um, I've told, those that care to listen. It, okay, the wife of the president is a woman. Whoever knows the wife of the president, I can assure you, has access more to a up than whoever knew the president. Mm -hmm. Whoever knew to ride under Buari, uh, under Yadua, is just checking it out. So I keep telling people whether male child or a uh, uh, in the family of the wife of the president today, the wife of the president is the prime child. So it's not a function of gender. It's just whatever God gives to you, 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 you accept. You make the Any, best uh, of it. Make the best. Make the best. Who wouldn't be proud to be the parents of the wife of the president or the wife of the governor of, of, um, of Lagos State or the wife of the, the wife of the speaker of the Federal House of Rep or the wife of the Senate, the Senate president, who would want to be? So it's, it's not a function, it's not a function of gender, it's a function of how you train your children and what you make them to become. Sadly, uh, this mindset, sadly, this mindset is just sort of come to stay 
in our own climb because uh, outside of uh, Nigeria, uh, really, most people do not care much about whether you have a male or a female child. What they need is a healthy child, that you have children, that you have children or that you have a child. That's if they want if to have, have a all, child. If you have all girls, if you have three girls, I used to tell my friend that has three girls. I said, you know what? You have three sons are still waiting for you. Because exactly. there are some people are going to get married to your daughter. Mm -hmm. So if you have two sons, I, I've said it, my daughter-in-law, I'll remove the in-law. It becomes my daughter. I'll relate with her just like my daughter. So it's an addition. So if you have girls, know that there's three addition boys that are becoming your son very soon. And if you have boys, there are three girls that, are, that will soon become your own daughter. So this thing is just a function of mentality and education and orientation. For people to see the larger picture, if you see the larger picture, you not worry about the the sex or the gender of your child when you give birth. And in this era of um, uh, global discourse on what should be the gender, whether gender is biological or whether gender is psychological, we never know. <laughs> what really We don't even want to go there. Let's not even touch that. <laughs> That is just one matter I hope we do not get to start talking about in Nigeria. I just hope we never get to that. Okay, so let's look at this um, story right on top of the masthead of Business Day. Tinubu's next big move is fighting crude theft, and that's uh, coming from the Bank of America. Okay, those... Like we said earlier, the market, if there's no market. So you said the next big, Bank of America is telling us the next big move. That should have been the first big move mm. before the removal of the subsidy. Who are those making Nigeria dry? Who are those that have made money from this country illegally? I think that, that should have been the first step. The very the first move. move. Yeah. It should have been the very first move, not inflicting pain on we. At the lower end, at the at the at the base of the value chain, the people at the top of the value chain making the money, you didn't deal with them. It is those that are the lowest ebb of the value chain that have been dealt with. So it's is either you are putting the cat before the horse, or is that a put? So that's that's just my take. Who are those? We need Nigerians need question. We want people to be prosecuted. We want people, for example. There was a budgetary allocation for the month of June, and there was no money for the month of June. Who are those that siphon? Because the removal of subsidy should start from July first, from tomorrow. Who are those that hurt the money like monkey, like like snake, like all those that were swallowing money? You remember those times and under under that they mm -hmm. said. So who are those that that swallowed the money? The budgetary allocation for the month of June. They, those ones should be made example of this money. This money, you see, he said when you want to deal with crime, follow the money. Every crime has a trade, and the easiest trade in any crime is to follow the money. So we have single treasury account. We have single treasury account. We have accounts through which government make payments. Can't you trace the money? Who are those collecting the money? Who are those collecting the money and not? delivering the services for the people. All right. Well, thank you so much, Chief Jide Johnson. I think we should leave it here on Up the Press. It's been so amazing having you, as always, to analyze the it, front pages of our it, national it, dailies. It, 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 my, my, my consultant told me that um, in following the money now that you can't follow Bitcoin. No, I have the Gen Z So So I was, as I was talking about following the money, he passed me a note that said you can't follow Bitcoin. So, well, those that will track it, will track it. <laughs> we will track it. We will get a chance to also to help us. Exactly, so, exactly. It's a pleasure. Thank it's a you. It's pleasure to be with you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Chief Jide Johnson, Chief Lecturer on Nigerian History of Journalism, has joined us this morning and off the press. We'll take a break now and come back with a hot topic. You want to know what uh, the discussion is about self-testing kit for HIV. Stay with us. <laughs>